Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Psalms. Today we are going to be engaging in an expository examination of Psalm 21. Psalm 21. So please, get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping in a groove. So I do that sometimes. Okay? Follow me along. All right? I am simply with this going to share with you what the Lord shared with me. Okay? So we have a lot to go through today. So let's get right to it. All right? This is not milk. This is meat. Okay, you want something milky? There are things on the channel here that are milky as it were. Okay, this is meat. Get the scriptures. Okay, get the scriptures and follow me along. And I'm going to address you as though you are, okay? So let's, let's get going. Got a lot to go through today. Psalm 21. We're going to begin by reading verses... 1 and 2 in Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Verse 2. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips. Selah, or Shelah. You got to remember, one of the sons of Judah was named Selah, all right? Which means to pause, all right? But right away, what we notice about Psalm 21 is, number one, it is a psalm attributed unto David. This is also a psalm that is considered a Christological psalm. Remember our Lord says uh, that there were things written about him in what? The law, the psalms, and the prophets. Okay, this is one of those psalms, a Christological psalm. That's how, that's what they, that's what they, you know, they, the educated, I'll label this as. This is a psalm that has a lot to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. But also, when we go through this, you will note that it is written in the third person point of view. And we're going to see that this psalm also encompasses King David, but also clearly gives uh, credence and reference onto the King of the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. Okay, But in looking at verses 1 and 2, The king shall join in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Verse 2, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips. Selah. And remember about the son, one of the sons of Judah. Okay? Psalm 20. Now you got to remember, the Psalms in and of themselves are not, are not always chronological. But in a way they are because, for example... Psalm 20 and 21 flow together, even though there is a sila pause with the psalm, like you have Psalm 20 and Psalm 21. Clearly, when you get into the 40s, okay, um, there are psalms that seemingly flow together, but they're separate, okay? In that, they go together, okay? Hence, Psalm 20. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. And what is his name? Jesus Christ. Okay. 
Send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy burnt offerings, and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Silah, or Shilah. And we're reading on to verse 5. Excuse me, we're not reading the whole song just yet. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Okay, now that's the, the turning point in this psalm is in verse 6, which we're not going to read verses 6 on to verse 9 just yet. But also in verse 20, okay, verse 20 goes along with, obviously, Psalm 21, where it says, Thou hast given him his heart's desire, okay? And how it, um, and in verse 1, And in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice, written in the third person. Also we have here in Psalm 20, David also attributing himself to this. Verse 5, we will rejoice in thy, adding himself into that, okay? And also, as we will see later in verses 6 on to verse 9, we see the I talking of himself personally, okay? All right? Psalm 21, now, verse 3. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness, Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. And you also got to remember, preventest him, what it says there, for thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Preventest him how? Well, for example, we are not, as the Church of the Living God, we are not to go unto the devil for peace. We are not to go unto the devil for comfort, okay? We are not to seek the devil or devils for answers, okay? We're not to seek the devils for anything, okay? Keep that in mind. But Psalm 18, verses 16 on to verse 24. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. And remember, Waters, not all the time, but waters can be likened onto nations, peoples, languages, and tongues, which we see in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, okay? That's not always the case. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Context describes it. But keep that in mind. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy mm. and from them which hated me for they were too strong for me they prevented me in the day of my calamity but the Lord was my stay mm. the devils can be allowed to prevent you from something because mm. you got to remember what you read in the book of Job chapters 1 and 2 about how Satan needed permission exclusively from the Lord to do anything unto Job. Thus it is for you and I as the church of the living God. Okay? Yes, devils can devils can and will <laughs> mess with you. Yes, they can. But see, they need permission from the Lord in order to do so. Okay? He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed within us me. And this verse 20 shows you for what dispensation this is written for. When he says, according to my righteousness, and we know that Paul mentions about the righteousness that is of the law, which is, if you keep the law, is your righteousness, okay? Got to remember that. So verse 20 shows us onto what dispensation this is specifically for. Not for us today, doctrinally, but instruction in righteousness. Okay, you got to remember that. Verse 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. Verse 21 explaining verse 20. 
and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Most of the times we tend to be our own worst enemies. Ain't that right, brother, sister, huh? Yeah. Therefore, verse 24, hath the Lord recompensed me with an S, me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. Why? Because Psalm 18, okay? This was a Psalm of David, keeping the law, okay? You kept the law that was accounted to you, your righteousness for doing what the Lord said according to the law, okay? That's why we don't keep it today. Because if, if keeping the law was a requirement for your salvation, then you would have something to boast to the Lord, wouldn't you? Think about it. It's like with these devil, uh, easy believers and heretics. They have something to boast about, don't they? I am saved because I just believed. Works. Okay? Works. And it's funny, coming about from the people that call everything a work, you know, prayer, uh, calling on the name of the Lord, repentance, blinking, breathing, okay? <laughs> it's funny that with easy believism, in, a, it, in and of itself, is a work. Go figure. Okay? Verse 3 again, Psalm 21. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. On his head. 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7. We want verses 8 on to verse 17. Verses 8 on to verse 17. The Lord's promise unto David. Okay? 2 Samuel 7, verses 8 on to verse 17. Now here in 2 Samuel 7, we are going to see a promise, a threefold. One unto David and unto his seed. A reference unto Solomon, but ultimately in its perfection will be fulfilled when our Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father, comes down with us at the second coming to establish the kingdom of heaven. That is the ultimate fulfillment, okay? All right, so let's read. Verses 8 on to verse 17. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in, the, in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Now, they did that. That happened. That did happen with the establishment of the kingdom of David. Okay, yes, that did. Yes, that did. And also, in a, in a way, with Solomon. But then again, Solomon loved many strange women. The ultimate player, as it were, okay? But the fulfillment, the perfect fulfillment of that will be what? The kingdom of heaven. The second coming. Fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the King of the Jews. King of kings, Lord of lords, okay? Let's continue. Verse 11. And as since the time that I commanded Judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. Just as the Lord did unto Abram, 
who would become Abraham. Okay? He called him out from amongst his kindred, Shem, to establish the Hebraic line, which from the Hebraic line comes Jesus Christ, God our Father. Is it not evident that our Lord, Lord sprang out of Judah? Okay? So right here, that building, because Jesus Christ is what? The son of David. And that is a reference onto the fact that he is the king of kings, Lord of lords. That's what that means. And also the genealogy of Mary, not Joseph, because Joseph wasn't his daddy. Okay, But the genealogy of Mary, which is in uh, the book of Luke, encompasses David. Okay, you got to remember that. Verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Reference to Solomon. Yes, it is. But this reference also is a twofold reference. Keep reading. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Hmm. Now, yes, King Solomon built the first temple. Yes, he did. It was magnificent, beautiful. Yes, it was. Okay. But Solomon's kingdom, okay, Solomon's kingdom was intact until he died. But because he done messed up and uh, went after many strange women, okay, the Lord sent so Solomon adversaries, okay? But his kingdom was basically, the kingdom of Israel was united until his son Rehoboam. Rehoboam, you know, they came to him and it's like, hey, make the servitude that your father put on a slider. And then uh, Rehoboam like, went to the old guys who were with his father, like, what should I do? They say, take it easy on them and be friendly with them. But he goes to his clique, his good buddies that he grew up with, like, what should I do? It's like, ah, your little finger will be thicker than your father's loins. And then it was a fiasco and the kingdom was divided. Okay? But see, ultimately, ultimately, the fulfillment of this. Yes, it was fulfilled in part with Solomon and the seed of David on the throne. Yes, that was. But its ultimate fulfillment will be in Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay? All right? Let's keep reading. I will be his father. And he shall be my son. Now see, verse 14 tells us clearly that this is not pertaining unto our Lord Jesus Christ. How so? If he commit iniquity, Jesus Christ, God our Father, never sinned. He could not sin. Okay? He can't sin. God can't sin. He can't do evil. Okay? He can't. Alright? So, clearly... This is not referring on, verse 14, is clearly not referring on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Some might like to say, well, the chastisement of them was upon me and by his stripes we are healed. But nonetheless, if you try to go into that angle for verse 14, if he commit iniquity, no, that doesn't work. That, yes, the chastisement of us all were laid upon Jesus Christ. Yes, it was. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen, amen, hallelujah. But to intuit that with verse 14 there, don't work. Don't work. Why? If he commit iniquity, Jesus Christ never sinned. Can't sin. Could never sin. Okay? Let's keep reading. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Okay? And amen. Thy throne shall be established 
forever. And of course, of course, the fulfillment of that is at the second coming when Jesus Christ comes back with us who get redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. We come back down with him. We are his army, okay? The fulfillment of that will be in the establishment of the kingdom of heaven, okay? Because Israel went into captivity under Babylon, okay? Okay? Zedekiah, Zedekiah was the last king, as it were, but the king, king of kings, lord of lords, is our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? All right? Verse 17. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Okay? For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. That was from Psalm uh, 21, verse 3 again. Okay? Now go into Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Okay, a lot of people seem to get confused with discerning where in like, especially in the Psalms, it's like, okay, what pertains unto the Lord? What doesn't? That kind of thing. It's actually a little bit more simple than we think. Okay, but Galatians chapter three, verses 15 and 16. Okay, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed, singular. Did you notice that? Okay. Did you notice that so far? Okay. And what we've looked at, it's always a singular reference. Okay. What we looked at in 2 Samuel there didn't say seeds. Okay. It was, it was a reference unto who? Okay, yes, Solomon was in that. But ultimately, ultimately, perfectly, the fulfillment of that promise unto David is in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? When you read in the New Testament, Jesus, thou son of David, that is, especially from a Jew, a Jew openly acknowledging Jesus Christ as king of the Jews, as the son of David, Son of David, when it comes to our Lord Jesus Christ, remember this is always a reference unto him as king. Okay? All right? All right? Verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And of course, the genealogy, which you trace from Mary, because remember, Joseph was not Jesus' daddy. It was not Yeshua uh, ben Yosef. Okay? That's nonsense. No. Because Joseph was not the father of Jesus Christ. Okay? No. No. And the Son of Man. What does that mean? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh, okay? Son of man, referencing to God manifest in the flesh, okay? That's what that means. Don't get confused on that, all right? Now go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We want verses 29 on to verse 36. <laughs> you charismatics, read it to 38. That's the gospel. Shut up. Shut up. Acts 2.38 is not the gospel. Okay, water baptism is not a requirement, Catholic, for your salvation. Okay, all right, Acts chapter 2, we want verses 29 on to verse 36. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet... King David was also mentioned as a prophet. Yes, you read the Psalms. Blah, okay. And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, 
according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And like I said, the genealogy of Mary is traceable onto David, okay? And further on and further on is stuff like that, okay? So that was fulfilled in that, all right? He seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption, and I do believe that is Psalm 16. Someone correct me in the comments section, but I believe that is Psalm 16. Let's keep reading. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, there's that tie-in with Jesus in the right hand, okay? That's not a cut on you southpaws. That doesn't mean you southpaw left-handed people are satanic. No, 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 no. A majority of the world is right-handed, okay? If you're a southpaw, that doesn't mean anything. But the right hand, the right hand of authority, that's what that means, okay? Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let, us, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords. Okay? So the ultimate fulfillment of that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, Psalm 21, verse 4. Are we done with that one? Yes, we are. Verse 4. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. Now, verse 4, he asked life of thee. Some might want, well, that's Solomon. Solomon did not ask the Lord for life, did he? Actually, to the contrary. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. <laughs> Sorry. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. We want verses 5 on to verse 13. What are you doing, Brad? Come on. 1 Kings chapter 3, we want verses 5 on to verse 13. Verse 4 is not at all talking about Solomon. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 13. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. When David messed up and got a little prideful, like, hey, look at what I got, and he had the armies of Israel numbered, uh, the Lord, through his prophet Gad, I believe it was, uh, went to David and said, I give you, the Lord gives you three choices. Uh, of punishment. Choose one of them. Oh, boy. Roll this around in your head. What if the Lord came to you and said, God said, ask what I shall give thee. What would you do? And see, this is where the satanic, charismatic, uh, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, whatever they are, devils catapult themselves from, off of. Lord, give me a million dollars so I can benefit the body of Christ. Lord, give me a better vehicle so I can go to and fro and see the brethren. Right? What would you do? Ask what I shall give thee. What would you do? You know what I'd do? Just for this little thing? I'd ask for my good friend from England. Truly be saved. 
save him. Break him and save him. Because with an enemy like that, to actually become a brother, what a brother he would be. What a brother you would be if you actually were. Yes. Or, Lord, cure, uh, make them release the cure for cancer. Because you know that the Jesuits got the cure for that. Come on now. Come on now. You know that they got it. There's no money in the cure. Ask what I shall give thee. Lord, make them put out the cure for cancer and cure cancer. But look, just roll that around your head. Okay? God asked Solomon, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. Yeah, he was made king. Even though he was one of the wisest men that ever lived, he's like, I can't do this. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. An understanding heart. And what is understanding? Departing from evil that I may discern, it's, it says it right there. Here's another definition for understanding. Okay, let's read this verse slowly. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Oh, we're not supposed to judge today. I shut up. That I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Give me an understanding heart so I can know which way is which. So I can judge appropriately according to your tenets. Not for my benefit, but for others. You see? Solomon asked for a very selfless thing there. And, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Now you think about them guys who's like, has this, give me a million dollars so I can help out the brethren. That sounds good, doesn't it? But what happened, what would happen if you were given a million dollars just like here, you know? What would happen? How long would you be able to be uncorrupted by that. Hmm? Hmm? Because you see some of these Christians who are charlatans, what has happened to them? Fame has gone straight to their head. The multitude of donations that they get and rubbing people's faces. Okay? Yeah, it goes, it goes to the head. Okay, it puffs people up. All right? Are there people out there who could handle something like that? Maybe. Maybe. But see, there again, think about that. Lord, give me a million dollars, and you give me a million dollars, I'll help every brother I can. And, and okay, your intentions may be pure. You know, may be pure. Okay, <laughs> for example, uh, there's a, a young sister, get her out of there, bring her here. Okay, My, our brother from uh, North Dakota, <laughs> you're set for life, brother. Uh, brother from um, Jersey, you're, you're set for life. Uh, brothers from Oregon, it's like, hey, don't worry about it, man, you set, you set. Okay, uh, brother from Croatia, it's like, here, you're set, man. Uh, the brother from, uh, uh, where are you? I keep forgetting. I get this mixed up. Sorry, brother. From Norway, 
It's like, hey, brother, hey, hey, here's to your farm. Here's to your crop. You, you're taken care of, okay? Our brother from uh, Iowa. Iowa, I, I get that. I'm sorry, brother. But you get the point, okay? Take care of the brethren, absolutely. But then there's that surplus. What would you do with it? Roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay, now let's continue. And God said unto him, verse 11, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Did you see that? And has not asked for thyself long life. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days, forever and ever. Clearly, verse 4 in Psalm 21 is not about Solomon. Clearly. But let's continue. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Pick your part. And of course, uh, you also will read about how um, six, uh, six, 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 something like that was the weight of gold that Solomon got every year. Okay? Not something to be glibly uh, skipped over. But what happened with Solomon? He loved many strange women. And that wealth that the Lord gave him. Okay? Even Solomon, who had a wise and understanding heart. Even Solomon. That's, see, that's the lesson that you get from Solomon. Solomon was actually, yes, and this I agree with that teaching that the, His Holiness did. Yes, King Solomon was an actual celebrity. Yes, he was. And um, strange women took away his heart from the Lord. And he said, because of that, he built uh, things onto false gods. And that's something, huh? Psalm 13. Psalm 13. And of course, uh, Psalm 13, we're going to read this in its entirety. Hopefully, beg your pardon, brethren. Hopefully, we can get this done, uh, finish Psalm 13 within the frame of time that we have. <laughs> Psalm 13. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart, in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? And this is a psalm attributed unto David. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Give me life. Lest mine enemies say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Now Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, is the source of all life. You're alive today, it's because the Lord has allowed you to live. You can breathe today, it's because the Lord has allowed that. Okay? All right? So verse 4 in Psalm 21, He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it, gavest it him even length of days, forever and ever. Okay? And in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, past verse 17, if you were to read David's response to the Lord, okay? We're not going to look at that today because we don't need to. Okay? Okay? But David asked of life. And here the part forever and ever, forever and ever there in verse 4, John 17, John 17, okay, 
John 17, the true Lord's Prayer. Uh, Roman Catholicism tells you that uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, they call that the Lord's Prayer. That's not the Lord's Prayer. That's a Jewish prayer given unto Jews. Okay? All right? That's not the Lord's Prayer. The actual Lord's Prayer is John 17. Okay? That's the Lord's Prayer. All right? The subtlety of the harlot of Rome. Okay? But John 17, verses 17 on to verse 24. Check this out. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hmm. Wonder, wonder what he's talking about. Yeah. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. God shall send himself. God, what is it? Uh, hold your place here. This just came to my mind. Uh, Genesis 22, verse 8. Don't want to botch that. Okay. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Not some stupid satanic second person of a three-person satanic devilish trinity. Okay? Oh yeah, yay. Oh yeah, yay. All right. Verse 19 in John 17 again. And for their sakes, sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us. That's you and me. That's us. Okay. Some people like to say that stopped after Acts chapter 7. No. The Lord was encompassing us in that as well. Okay. You and I today. Okay. Isn't that great? Brother, sister, right there. The Lord prayed for you personally. Think about that, huh? That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, the soul of the Godhead, okay? And I in thee, okay? That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father. The Word made flesh. Okay? Body. Okay? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay? Catholic. It's not talking about your stupid, devilish, Babylonian, Egyptian Catholic Trinity. The idea of the Trinity has its origins in Babylon, you idiot. But of course you're a Catholic, so. <laughs> and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. Okay? One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Yes. I and them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Verse 4 and Psalm 21. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest him, even length of days forever and ever, that we might be with the Lord forever and ever. We just see it right there in uh, John 17. 
Isn't that great? <laughs> Verse 5 now. In Psalm 21. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. Now verse 5, even to a novice, a babe, bless your heart and soul, and I don't mean that in the southern way. I do not mean that in the southern way. Okay, Verse 5, a novice is like, well, that's clearly talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely, amen, hallelujah. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. What are you doing, Brad? Psalm 89. 18 on to verse 29. Psalm 89. Verses 18 on to verse 29. I told you this was milk, didn't I? For the Lord is our defense. The Holy One of Israel is our King. King of kings. Lord of Lords. Then thou spakest in vision to thy Holy One, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Now, check out verse 20. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Okay, and Samuel anointed uh, David. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. But it's a little bit deeper than that, okay? God chose David, just as God chose Abram and called him out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line, the, the, the Ute, the Ute, who was ruddy, who kept the sheep and stuff, you know? When all the sons of Jesse passed before Samuel, Samuel's like, wait a minute, the Lord hasn't chosen these guys. Is this all your children? And they're like, oh, oh yeah, there's, there's another one, but he's out there. And, you know, he, see that mentality? Oh, yeah, there we have another son, another child, yeah. But he's out there with the, the sheep. We, you don't want him. And Samuel's like, oi, wait, would you get him over here? And then, of course, here comes David, who is ruddy and stuff like that, and of a beautiful countenance. And the Lord's like, bingo. See, again, God's a God of the little guy. God's a God of the little guy. Okay? God's for the underdog. Okay? That's so why you got to watch out for these celebrity preachers, brethren. And that's coming in another video this week. Thank you, my dear best friend, for the rebuke. Love you, brother. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? Verse 21. With whom my hand hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And remember in the book of Revelation, I believe it's uh, Revelation 21, where the Lord says, I'm coming, I, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He is our reward. Jesus Christ is our peace. He is our salvation. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Okay? And in my name shall his horn be exalted. What is his name? That is a trick question, sorry. Verse 25, I will set his hand also in the sea, in his right hand in the rivers. Hmm. Another reference unto people? He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I also, also, excuse me, I will make him my firstborn, Higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. And my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed. Singular. Also will I make to endure forever. And his throne as the days of heaven. Now again, we can, you can weave into that 
reference to Solomon. Yes. But the ultimate, you've got to remember this, the ultimate fulfillment will be the second coming with us who get redeemed as the army that comes with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. At the second coming, the establishment of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Got to remember that, brethren. You have got to remember that. And let's read verse 5 again. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. Some of you are probably thinking, well, Brad, why aren't you reading from Psalm 2? This is what the Lord shared with me, and I'm sharing it with you. Okay? Psalm 2 is a little obvious, too, by the way, isn't it? Yes. Isaiah 49, verses 5 on to verse 7. And, by the way, you'll speaking of Psalm 2, just never mind. Isaiah 49, verses 5 on to verse 7. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Oh, golly gee willikers, I wonder who he's speaking of, of right here, huh? Come on, we know that. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Beg your pardon. Right there, right there is a very important verse because verse 6 tells us that us Gentiles were always to be included into the salvation that we have today. Okay? All right? Because when our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross, okay, with the death of the testator brought in this dispensation. Okay? The death of the testator, you read about that in Hebrews 9. The death of the testator, or is it Hebrews 10? One of the two. The death of the testator brought in this dispensation, the New Testament. Okay? This dispensation, which we are saved by grace through faith. Okay? But see, just like with the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual because God is just, right, and equal, and fair. He had to offer it first, primarily alone unto the Jewish people. Okay? But see, it was prophesied, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. There it is prophesied that us Gentiles were going to be grafted into this thing sooner or later. So you might be thinking, it's like, okay, well, then why did God do it then? Number one, he's God. And number two, his ways are equal. Our way is not equal. Okay? He's fair. Would God have been fair even though he knew, even though it's prophesied right there in front of you that us Gentiles were going to be grafted into it? Okay? Would God still have been fair if he had not primarily alone first offered unto his own people the kingdom of God? Would he have been fair? No, he wouldn't have. God is a fair God. His, he, is, he is more fair than anybody on earth, in, in heaven and on earth, and especially under the earth. Okay? But see, that's why we say, well, it was prophesied that Israel was going to first reject the kingdom of heaven. Boy, my emails are going nuts. Ugh going to uh, reject the kingdom of heaven and that they would eventually, of course, reject the kingdom of God. And they did that in Acts chapter 7. Okay? And as John was baptizing people onto the kingdom of heaven, okay, the same thing, why they were baptizing in that manner in the book of Acts. But water baptism was never a requirement for salvation. It wasn't. It was an identification, just like the baptism of John was an identification unto the coming kingdom of heaven. 
They were being baptized for the kingdom of God that was first being primarily offered onto the Jews, but the way of salvation was still by grace through faith. Okay? But the water baptism was there in similar respects as onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? A lot of people like, Acts 2.38! Dude, that's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. Okay? Water baptism is not a requirement for your salvation. Okay? So, let's... A little rabbit trail there, but let's continue. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One. Now, note the capitals there. Okay? That's a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. To him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because the Lord, because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. And who is to thee? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, King of the Jews. Okay, I hate to mention this, but I because it's rolling around here in the brain case. Charles Manson, some of you have heard of him, crazy devil, serial killer guy. He gave an actually very interesting quote. Someone asked Charles Manson, "Do you believe in Jesus?" And you know what his response was? What Jesus? There are a lot of Jesuses. There's the Mexican Jesus. There's the black Jesus. There's the Jewish Jesus. And he said with that wicked smile, there are all kinds of Jesuses. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. It's like, wow, that, that was quite a statement coming from a devil himself. There are many Jesuses, aren't there? But there is only one who is God our Father. The Jesus of the Catholic and the Trinity. They're, they're there. There are many Jesuses. All right. Verse 6 in Psalm 21. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Now we go to Psalm 2. See? Now we go to Psalm 2. Now we go to... we th This Psalm 2, especially with that verse, yeah, we could have done that. And what was that? Where are we now? We could have done that for 5, yes, but verse 6, uh, uh, verse 6 here. Psalm 2, verses 6 on to verse 12. Of course, this one is obvious. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree... The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and clear references, and even in the, uh, the thing in the middle here, uh, references on to Revelation. Okay? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Excuse me. Be, ye, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. That hasn't changed today. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. The thing about the Trinity is that these Trinitarians are in league with Catholicism. So because Catholicism has everything wrong, but yet they got who God is actually right? Come on. 
Come on. They have all these things wrong, but yet they got who God is right. Am I the only one that it's like, Bruh! that's crazy. Hmm? Yeah. They got all of this stuff wrong, but yet at the core, then that means at its core, at its root then, Catholicism must be the true religion. Because after all, they got all these things wrong. Yes, they're in all this heresy, but at the core of Catholicism, they got with their stupid satanic trinity that began with Babylon, um, they got that right. Okay. Okay. I don't want any of what you're smoking. Okay? Go away. Galatians 4, verses 3 on to verse 7. Galatians 4, verses 3 on to verse 7. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. The law was still binding while Jesus Christ was walking on the earth. Okay? I totally disagree with some people's um, idea that uh, a dispensation was the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that no. No, the law was still binding. Because if it wasn't still binding, then why did he go to the cross? Crazy. But anyway, anyway. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And what are we reading to? Verse 7. And because ye are sons, God has set, sent forth the capital S, the Lord himself, spirit of his son, into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son than an heir of God through Christ. Of course, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Let's read verse 6 again. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets <coughs> in the Holy Bible. Oh, excuse me, in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. And that genealogy is traceable in the book of Luke, okay? And declared to be the Son of God with power. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Okay? according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. The called. Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Jesus Christ died to the on the cross. So the called of Jesus Christ means those who go to the Lord the way he has prescribed for us in order for him to save us. The cross. Okay? It's not that you're of Ham and you are a chosen one. That's heresy. No. The called of Jesus. It's not elect and non-elect. No. The called of Jesus Christ. The way that's east of the cross. Okay? The way, the call, the way of the cross. Okay? Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. He went to the cross. He died for our sins. Okay? I put him on the cross. Okay? He shed his blood. All right? The cross. That's what that's talking about. The call of Jesus Christ. The way of the cross. Okay? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, Called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is in Rome. Scripturally, Dana, lick of evidence there, Catholic, that um, your Peter, which is actually who? Jupiter? 
All right? Or Mirez, one of the two. Um, your Peter was never scripturally in Rome. Thank you, Barb. All right. Verse 7 in Psalm 21. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Now, for this, Psalm 20, but also you can intuit the Garden of Gethsemane. Psalm 20. We want verses 6 on to verse 9. Notice how we're returning to Psalm 20 again? Uh, well, hey, dummy. Here. Psalm 20, 6 on to verse 9. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots. And some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. And stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. For the king trusteth in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. And you put into that the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but thine be done. Okay? Not my will be done. But the, let's go there. One second. One second. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Verses 32 on to verse 38. And they came to a place which, which was called Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. The soul of the Godhead was sorrow, sorrowful unto death. Because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. God was about to go to the cross. Okay? God the Father identifies with everything that you and I go through in this life. Okay? See, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God within flesh. God cannot sin. God cannot be tempted to sin. But see, this rotten, ragged, nasty thing that these devils worship, this is where all temptation lies. Okay? Through this medium, as it were. Hence, God in flesh. He was going to die. He was going to get the snot kicked out of him. God knows what it's like. People who are about to die... God understands. You don't have a God who can't understand or relate to what you feel because Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, identifies. But see, him being God, he never sinned. See how that works? And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Not my will be done, but thine. He must increase, and I must decrease. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Shimon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, <laughs> but the flesh is weak. Unless you're a Catholic or one of these Christians which glorify flesh, and your flesh is strong, right? Yeah. Verse 8. Verse 8 in Psalm 21. 
Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Oh boy. Book of John. The Book of John. How does someone deal with truth is very telling to who they actually serve. Beg your pardon. What do you deal, how do you deal with truth? John chapter 3, verses 18 on verse 21. Let's read, where are we? Verse 8, let's read verse 8 again. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand, synonymous with our Lord, shall find out those that hate thee. John 3, 18 on 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Now that's a lowercase l, okay? And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. But yet in John chapter 1, you see four times the capital L, light reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I got so irate in the previous video at that disgusting Mason. Okay? For everyone... Uh, let's read verse 19 again. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light. Why? lest his deeds should be reproved. You had not known lust, unless the law had said, what, thou shalt not covet? There are some of you out there, it's like, man, I wish I hadn't heard what the scriptures say, that what I like so much is actually sin. Showing that you love your sin more than you love God. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Mm. See, Christianity paints to you this Jesus, like that, like that devil Manson said. What Jesus? There are many Jesuses. There are a lot of Jesuses. Which one are you talking about? Right? A devil said that. But see, the Jesus that Christians want you to believe on is the sissy wimp who never confronted anybody, who, who had no standards. That's the son of perdition. That's Satan that they're talking about. The Christ that the Christians are offering on to you is Satan. Just like in that previous video, about that uh, wicked Mason. <coughs> Masons. Attributing the capital L light onto Satan. <coughs> wicked. John 7, verses 6 on to verse 7. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, the time when he was to go to the cross, but your time is always ready. You have life today. What are you going to do with it? Hmm? You have today. The sun's out actually here. Wow. Hallelujah. But you have today. What are you going to do? Hmm? Your time is always ready. Okay? You have today given to you. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the next what? Five minutes. What are you going to do, pal? What are you going to do with it? Verse 7, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Why? Because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Verse 7 in Psalm 21 again, for the king trusteth in the... Well, no, 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 where are we? We're at verse 8. Excuse me, excuse me. Thine hand shall find out thou all thine enemies. Thy right hand... Jesus on the right hand of God. Okay, get it? Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Why? Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. 
Why, why, why do you think Christianity likes the NIV, ESV? Because it's not the scripture. It's not what God wrote. It's not God's word. You can find a script, uh, uh, excuse me. You can find a Bible to suit any one of your agendas. You can. You can read that disgusting message, okay, to justify sodomy. Love is love. As is above, so below. Taken from Alexander Crowley himself, I believe. Okay? You can find a Bible to justify a woman preacher. Okay? You can have a Bible that's like that idiot uh, Bible flock box. Find a Bible that's good for you. It's like, no, no, no. Your preference has nothing to do with God's word. This is God's word. Okay? All right? And... Jesus Christ, God our Father, the God of the authorized version of the scriptures, is exclusive. It's exclusive and objective, not subjective. Okay? And the God, the true God of the authorized version of the scriptures, who is the true God, Christianity wants nothing to do with. Hence, yeah, that's God said. See? See? My, Brad, you don't prefer the authorized version? No. Oh, shush, shush. This is God's word. My preference has nothing to do with it. My preference is irrelevant. This, this, this is God's word. This is the authorized version of the scriptures. This is what God has said. This is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. Okay? This is God's word. You take this and translate this into other tongues. Okay? The Greek and the Hebrew, which ones? Okay? They have, they are passe. They, here it is. Okay? Preference is irrelevant. This is God's word. Okay? You understand? Comprende? All right? This is God's word. Uh, my, do I prefer this? No. Why? This is all there is. Do I want, no, this, I love his word, okay? I love his word. This is his word, period, end of story. Preference has nothing to do with it. But Christianity, <laughs> you like chocolate or strawberry, fudge ripple or uh, moose tracks. I like moose tracks, by the way, okay? Preference has nothing to do with it, as if you're choosing flavors of ice cream. But see, the, the Jesus of the scriptures. One thing you lack, boy. He puts his finger on that one thing every time. That's why Christianity doesn't like him. But they like Satan. Sure do. John 15. John 15. Verses 18 on to verse 23. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Like virtually all the Christians you're going to meet. If I had not come and spoke Spoken unto them. They had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Look at that verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had, not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. How does God speak to you today? Oh, he has to appear before you and you hear him audibly. It's insane. It's insane. How does God speak to you today? His word. You want to hear God speak to you audibly? 
Read the scriptures out loud. God speaks. Okay? The argument, well, can he audibly speak to you today? But see, when people who have claimed that God's face, man, my emails are going crazy. When these people say God spoke to me, it's always contrary to scripture. It's always non-dispensational. It's always self-glorifying. Well, I've seen it. You've seen the devil, man. Okay? But, okay, uh, John 16 now. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 15. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. There are those out there who said that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict people of sin. <laughs> yeah, not those specific people because they're not saved. The spirit that's in them is the spirit of, of a devil. That spirit of Antichrist. Okay? But right there, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of blah, judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot hear them, bear them now. Excuse me. Howbeit when he, the Spirit, capital S, of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shew it, and shall shew it unto you. And the Lord is that spirit. One God. One God. You have the Father dwelling within you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost. Okay? Thine hand shall find out thine all thine enemies. All thine enemies. Thy hand. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. You speak to them the truth. Rightly divided, you speak to them the truth. How do they handle it? Do they hate it? Eight out of ten people nowadays, almost nine out of ten people nowadays, they don't want to hear it. My Jesus wouldn't do that. And like that guy, Charles Manson said, which Jesus? There are a lot of Jesuses. There are many Jesuses. There's the white, the Mexican, the black, the Jewish. What Jesus? And that came from a devil. But what Jesus? See, the Jesus of Scripture does exactly that. Verse 8. That's why this is, this is the sword of the Spirit. Because, uh, and thank you for this, brother. Uh, yesterday, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I'm not going to quote it verbatim, even though I could. I want us want us to look at it in the, on the print on the page. Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. There's your person right there. Soul and spirit, joints, of mar joints and marrow are part of the body, okay? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? And what's that in Ephesians, brother? Uh, what is that? Ephesians uh, 6, I believe that is. Ephesians 6. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. 
verse 7, Ephesians 6, verse 17, 17, not 7. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the word of God. Why do you think people don't want to read the scriptures? Why do you think people are so quick to recommend a Bible rather than the scriptures? Why do you think I'm so adamant about calling God's word a Bible? Even though it says it right there. What Jesus do you believe on? Because there are many Jesuses. Even the devil says that. Now verse 9. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. There were many things that the Lord, you know, that when, uh, when we came to this, but the Lord was insistent upon just one portion of Scripture for this. Deuteronomy 32, verses 21 on to verse 25. And this, this is instruction and in righteousness for us. That is, oh, well, Deuteronomy 32, 21 on to verse 25. Doctrinally, specifically talking for the Jewish people or for the Jewish people. But to instruct us in righteousness, this is, wow. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. The Trinitarian. The easy believism heretics, Catholics, yeah, all the like. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. Clearly right there for the Jewish people. Which is, is fulfilled in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 11. You know, that Jewish jealousy when they see us Gentiles with having their God. Okay? Like I said, a true Jew who's worth any of their salt, they look at this Christianity today, they're not jealous of that. Okay? And a Jew jealous of even this King James Bible in Christianity? No. No. They're not jealous of a religion. They're jealous if they can see in you their God. Or making blah, 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 talk to talk. But he is he really in there? Which Jesus do you believe on, pal? For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Mountains, the pe uh, reference on the people, okay? Reference on the people. Stubborn and, and high mountains and their deceits and stuff like that, okay? I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. Now, also you can intuit in this the Holocaust. And we've talked about that before in older videos, the uh, three-part video on the Holocaust, okay, where we go through this, okay, reference on to the Holocaust, yes, okay. But see, God is a jealous God. People think that today with this fake Jesus, this lovey dubby sissy that they're preaching, okay, that God's not like that. No, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? All right? You get messed up worshiping another Jesus, worshiping devils. God is a jealous God. And God's anger, God's wrath, is against you if you reject the gospel. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. Okay? The God of the scriptures gets angry. 
He's angry at you. He's angry at the wicked every day. But see, Christianity, oh no, God loves you. One of the most heated arguments that I've had probably ever with, with the stinking Christians at that building. God's angry at you. You're, you're not saved. How dare you? Oh, I dare, pal. <laughs> we got, you know, <laughs> we got, that was pretty heated. <laughs> that was pretty heated. You know, that was pretty heated. People actually had to get involved and separate us. Okay? <laughs> it was, it, that, and shame on me. Shame on me. I should not have, um, and there was no justifying. Yeah, there was, a, there was righteous indignation, but, you know, I shouldn't have gotten that close to the guy and ready, you know, we don't do that, you know. But verse 25, the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs, meaning it doesn't matter who you are. You reject what God has done, the truth of the gospel. You reject it one time. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. Okay? Yes, God would have all men to be saved. But see, you have to repent of your self-righteousness. And when you, you want to hold on to your self-righteousness, well, there is the NIV, the message, the new non-King James Version, the New American Standard, the ESV, the Holman Christian Standard, the Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version. Okay? There you go. There you go. You can find justification for any of your sins in one of that tripe. Not here, Jack. This cuts you. Verse 10 in Psalm 21. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. Their fruit. Now verses 10 and 11, and because a brother asked about verse 11, which brought this on, okay? But verse 10, Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're only going to make one reference to the Old Testament in this, but let's start in Matthew chapter 7. The obvious, okay? And you got to remember, the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Got to remember that. But our instruction in righteousness, verses 15 on to verse 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree that bringeth forth good fruit, and there is, and what is good? God. you got to remember, context with this is in context unto the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, which is all works. There is no faith involved in the kingdom of heaven. The only time faith is mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount, it's a rebuke. O ye of little faith. Okay? All right? Faith is not necessary when you can see the guy on the throne. Okay? Kingdom of heaven, all works. Let's continue. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay? And now go to... Uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. See, the fruit of devils can produce for a while, but see, and here's the thing that we got to remember, especially with verses 10 and 11. The eternal mindset. To be eternally minded. We're going to touch on that a little bit more when we get to verse 11. 
but with for especially verses 10 and 11 okay especially these two verses keep in mind see satan works satan loves uh, f satan's all about the flesh he savoreth the things that be of man, not of God. Remember, Satan was cursed to crawl on his belly and eat dust all the days of his life or whatever, okay? We are made out of dust, okay? So Satan's main thing is this right here. And theater. To put on a good show. To put on a good performance. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. But Romans chapter 6. See, they can produce fruit. But is that a fruit that endures eternity? Because we can, you see, you see that quite often, don't you? You see some of these devils who actually have these big numbers and are actually doing good things. But is it a fruit that endures unto eternity? Or is it just something to be saw, seen with the eyes? Huh? Romans 6, verses 20 on to verse 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then, and those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin, and become servants, not slaves, Servants, you have a choice. Remember, it's not at gunpoint. Slaves, it's at gunpoint. Be careful with that. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hmm. Today is the 23rd. You ought to read uh, Matthew 23, where it talks about how the Pharisees and stuff, all their works they do to be seen before men. Is the fruit that is being produced, especially by Christianity, just a fruit that is only visible to the eye and only temporal? Or is it a fruit that is has eternal consequence? Oh, bad fruit does have eternal consequence, yes. But I think you know where I'm getting at. I hope you do. Jude. Jude. Jude does not have chapters. Okay? Jude is Jude. Just like Obadiah is Obadiah. Okay? Jude. We want verses 10 on to verse 13. Verse 10, their fruit in uh, pro, uh, Psalm 21, their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. Their fruit will endure for a while, but it doesn't have any lasting uh, effects for that which is good into eternity. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Naturally, unregenerate man, okay? Unregenerate, unregenerate not saved man, okay? 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capitalist spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, let's continue. In Jude, verse 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah, these are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, I believe like you do. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, what Jesus do you believe on? Yeah. Feeding themselves without fear. 
Yeah. How are you supposed to love someone you're afraid of? I, I could explain that to you, but you wouldn't get it. <laughs> Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead. This is the second death. The second death, twice dead, hello, McFly, okay? Plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. What Jesus do you believe on? The Jesus of the NIV? The ESV? The New American Standard? Or the Jesus of the Scriptures? Which Jesus do you believe on? And see, Christianity can produce fruit. But what is the fruit that Christianity and these fakes produce? Oh. Oh. Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. Like it says in Isaiah. Go to Isaiah, by the way. Isaiah chapter 57. Okay. Like it says in Isaiah 40. Man is like uh, grass and withereth away. Here today, gone tomorrow. The fruit of wickedness. Okay? Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. We want 3 unto 12. Isaiah 57 verses 3 unto verse 12. But draw nigh hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the hua. The whore. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mm -hmm. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? <laughs> Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Christians, inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. <laughs> A little statue reference there? Sure. But is that all an idol is? No. No. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks, among the smooth stones. Of the stream is thy portion. They are thy lot, thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the posts hast thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me. And art gone up, thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. Meaning, you'll take anything. Like, uh, what is that, those emergent Christians who want to merge Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, uh, and everything into Christian. It's a smorgasbord. That's called being a spiritual whore. Brad, take offense, take a gate. Okay? Take offense, take a gate. You want to encompass things of Satan into the faith that was once delivered onto the saints? You're being a whore. Not going to sugarcoat it. There's only one way. There's only one book. There's only one God. 
Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And what did we already look at? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? Verse 9. And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Well, Brad, I sleep great every night. I'm sure you do. But see, eternally, you're wearied. You're a wearied soul. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. Yes, you found the life of your hand by playing a whore with all these other religions, going to Satan for comfort. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied and hast not remembered me nor laid it to thy heart? Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearedest not me? And what are we reading to? Verse 12. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Do you understand that? You're trying to keep the law today? It won't profit you. Okay? You're trying to encompass, well, how did they worship their gods? It's not going to profit you. This Christianity today, people, this King James Bible-believing Christianity is not going to profit you. Why? It's Christian! And Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Take a fence, take a gate. Uh, hopefully, uh, if I, I gotta find it again, sister. Um, I was sent this thing with that had this these posters about I am a Christian. I might talk about that in another video, but yeah. Run away from Christianity, because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Too. Now, verse 11. For they intend evil against thee. They, uh, uh, verse 20, uh, pro, bleh. Psalm 21, verse 11. For they intended evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Now, this was something interesting. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. See that? Psalm 2, verses 1 under verse 5. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. There are people out there who actually believe, think that they're going to get away from the judgment of the Lord. You're going to give an account of yourself to the Lord. Whether you get redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble, like those of us of the Church of the Living God who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ, we get caught up where the judgment seat of Christ is for us. After that, it's the great white throne of judgment. Okay? You're going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ one way or another. You're not going to escape that. You can say, cast, can't let us cast their cords asunder from us. You're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account to him. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That truth, okay, that truth, you're not going to escape. It doesn't matter if you want to believe on him or not. You are going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your belief on that alone, on that alone of you giving account to him, of you standing before him for judgment, that alone, 
Your belief on that is irrelevant because that's what's going to happen. You're going to give an account to him. Okay? All right? But now go to Psalm 83. Psalm 83. Wow, thank you, Lord. Turn right to it. Verses 1 and verse 8. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make atonement, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. <laughs> Look at what's going on today. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that you're seeing done in replacement theology with Catholicism is the mother of it. But you see that with the, the black Hebrew Israelites, the Brizraelites, the British Hebrew Israelites, and a lot of Christianity, okay? Replacement theology, okay? That the Christians, God forbid, has replaced the Jew, Okay? For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, the brother of Israel, and of the Ishmaelites, the firstborn of Abraham, of Moab and the Hagarenes, Moab, the Moabites, of Lot, the Hagarenes don't know, but Moab, of the incestuous relation between Lot and his daughters. Okay? Jebal and Ammon, the Ammonites. And Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre. A sure also is joined with them. They have hoping the children of Lot, Shelah, Selah, pause. So, what is this telling us? That from all types, there are those that don't want to hear the truth. There are those of Edom, of Ishmael, of Moab, the Hagarines, Jebal, and Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines, Tyre, Assur. It's going to be widespread. It is widespread. People that are rising up against the Lord. Okay? But Psalm 140 now, Psalm 140, Psalm 140, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Psalm 140, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. Look at the coadjutors, look at the infiltrators. Look at the people who attack the church of the living God. I rest my case. Okay? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Shelah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net for they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Shelah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. Note that word device. Yeah. For they intend... Evil against thee, verse 11 in Psalm 21, they imagine a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Hmm. As for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Okay, so what about this which they are not able to perform? Huh? What about that? Let's think, let's think about this. Like we already said, in order for Satan to afflict, 
to uh, afflict or do anything to us of the church of the living God. We learn about this in Job. Satan needs permission. Okay, number one, Satan to attack us needs permission from the Lord. Okay, all right, number one. But what about some of these things that come to pass? Okay, because in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, the mark of the beast is obviously going to be implemented. Okay, obviously, that's going to be implemented. Absolutely, absolutely, okay? That's going to come to pass. But see, with that, the mark of the beast, there is an eternal consequence to it. You take the mark of the beast and you go to hell. But see, they can, to an extent, perform some of these things. But what is the fruit of these things? Go, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 11 on to the close of the chapter. Right here. Let's read this. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. Reference there unto the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Eternal fruit. Fruit. The, uh, the, fruit, of, uh, the fruit of the church of the living God. Okay? Fruit that leads on to eternal heavenly reward, okay? Which is not the reason why we do it, okay? We do what we do out of love for the Lord, not just to get a reward, okay? The reward is icing on the cake, okay? Well, let's continue, let's continue. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the Glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, is renewed day by day. For our light, now listen to this. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. An eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Aha. Aha. A clue. How so, Brad? Well, you got to remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, what's going to happen? Okay, go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, we're going to read, we've been through this plenty of times, verses 8 on to verse 12. Okay, all right. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul's talking about the redemption of the purchased possession. In verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. Okay, that's the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, that's the catching away. Erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay, that's it right there. Verse 8, And then, Shall that wicked be revealed? Who is that? That man of sin, the son of perdition, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Talking about his second coming. Now, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Hmm. Hmm. Power and signs and lying wonders. The false prophet is going to make fire come down out of heaven to ooh and awe people during the time of Jacob's trouble, mocking Elijah, 
who has that power that is talked about in Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, okay? See, what the devils do, they put forth what? Lying, uh, signs and lying wonders. They are able to do some of these things, but the performance thereof for the eternal consequence. That's what the that's where it lies because hey, some of these these devils can perform some of these miracles, can't they? But it says that they are not able to perform. How many of those things do do they fail at? But the things that they do, they are temporal. Things that are to be seen, the things that we can't see are eternal. See, what the devils do is all about theater. It's a show. It's a it's a performance. Okay? With the signs and lying wonders. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So see, the devils are able to perform some things. But see, like we saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, the devils today, they operate in what? Signs and lying wonders. They're able to perform those to deceive those who receive not the love of the truth. And that's especially going to be happening during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But their ultimate goal of, of Satan is what? To overthrow God. Right? Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, okay? Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 on to verse 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding, departing from evil, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Now, see, right there, the mark of the beast is going to be implemented. It is going to be performed. Okay? We, it's right there. It's right there. But see, those who have understanding, departing from evil, it's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And see, you take the mark of the beast, you're going straight to hell. Well, you're, you're doomed to go to hell. Okay? No ifs, ands, or buts. Don't believe MacArthur, uh, Breaker, Kim, these guys who say you can lop it off or gouge it out. No. You take that mark, you're going to hell. Okay? All right? But those who have understanding, those who receive a love of the truth, during this time period, during the time of Jacob's trouble, with those who have that understanding, they're not going to be able to perform that device on them, are they? See, verse 11, For they intend evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device, a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. And ultimately, what is that mischievous device? To overthrow God! And they can't. They can't perform that. They can give signs and lying wonders to the wazoo. Okay? All right? And Satan works in flesh. He gives theater, show, you know, signs and lying wonders. Okay? Even today. Okay? But see, their ultimate mischievous device is what? Is what? What is their ultimate mischievous device which they cannot perform. Isaiah chapter 14. You knew we were going there, didn't you? You knew we were going there. I hope you did. Isaiah 14. 
verses 12 on to verse 15. What what are these that intend evil? Their, uh, verse 10, their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth. What do they all want to do? What is Satan's goal? How art thou fallen from heaven? Uh, Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. It's the old adage, Satan can win a couple battles, but Satan's going to lose the war. They, he can deceive people. Yes, there are, obviously, the mark of the beast. That's going to be performed. Obviously. But what is verse 11? They, for they intended evil against thee. What's the evil that these people, about uh, uh, verses 8, on to verse, uh, until the close of, of Psalm 21, the turning point, verse 8. Okay, what, what is their ultimate end? Of these people that don't want to hear the truth. Okay. Like in verse 8. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Okay. What is their device? Ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. I will be like the most high. Ye are your own little gods. That's their ultimate device. Which they can't perform. Because the mark of the beast is right there. Right there. Okay, and the eternal consequence of taking the mark of the beast is in Revelation chapter 14. Whosoever, you go to hell and get tormented in the presence of the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? All right? They're going to perform that. But what can't they ultimately perform? The overthrowing of God. That's what it is. That's what that's talking about. I believe. Okay, that's what the Lord showed me about that verse. Okay? Because the mark of the beast is going to be implemented. Okay? Satan is allowed to rule this world and to deceive many. Okay? How? What, what Jesus? There are many Jesuses. Okay? There are these things that these devils are performing. Okay? But the ultimate thing that they cannot perform is the overthrow of God. Hence, for they intend evil against thee. What ultimate evil is there than to say you are your own God? Okay? They imagine a mischievous device. A mischievous device. What is that singular mischievous device? Exactly that. You are your own God. You are your own idol. You are your own judge. That's it. Which they are not able to perform. You can't replace God. You are not God. And you cannot do away with God. Like I said, you are going to give an account of yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your belief on that alone is irrelevant. You are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot overthrow that. Comprende? In verse 12 and verse 13, let's finish this up. In Psalm 21. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back. Yeah, because what is that like verse 11 again? What can't they do? You can't get rid of God. You might not want nothing to do with them. You might call us of the church of the living God crazy. At the end of the day, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And your belief on that part alone, that aspect alone, is irrelevant. You're going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that you rejected your entire life. The one who you tried to replace and call it yourself. You're going to have to stand before him. Okay? 
That's why I said, brethren, we have to be eternally minded because what does Satan work in? He works in the now, the things that could be seen. Look at these, look at these Christian YouTubers and all their, their subscribers and all their stuff. It's, it's, it's eye candy. It's temporal. Okay? God's God is a little guy. Therefore, verse 12 and 13 in Psalm 21, Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. We're almost done, actually. Psalm 11. Wow. Doing this in my emails just blew up, man. <laughs> Psalm 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? A, a, a high mountain, your own conceit? Hmm? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And we have a firm foundation. The rock, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hate. God has a soul? <laughs> yeah. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Hold your place here. I'll actually go to Psalm 64, because that we're going to read in its entirety next. But... Uh, the Lord loveth righteousness. Uh, hold your place there at Psalm 64. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know what verse we're going to be looking at? Hmm. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness. Not a righteousness that you do by... Uh, Keeping the law. Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue, W-H-E-T, wet, sharpening stone, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that last week was over because we were, oh boy, oh boy, the spiritual attacks that we endured. And as I was so beautifully rebuked by my best friend and brother, it's, and even a sister brought this up. Uh, so in the mouth of two or three witnesses, okay? During that time of suffering last week, <laughs> and it was pretty bad, I should have gone out to my brethren, and I didn't. More on that in another video this week. But let's continue. They encourage themselves in an evil, evil matter, as if they can overthrow God. They commune of lying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. 
They, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. You know, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, it talks, about, um, it talks about that man of sin, the son of perdition, being let loose by our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? Verses 1 and 2 in Revelation chapter 6, And I heard, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow with no arrows, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. He had a bow with no arrows. It's all about showmanship. And of course you read in Revelation 19. Let's read that. Then we'll be done. Then we'll be done. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. <laughs> and see, the Lord, he has a sword that proceeds out of his mouth. The word of God, sword of the spirit, his word, he just speaks. Okay? But, 11 on to verse 16, and then we'll be done. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse... And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, many crowns. Well, that medicine, the son of perdition, only has one, okay? And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W, the seventh appearance, the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him, that's us, upon white horses, clothed in linen, fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his, on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And that sword that goes out of his mouth... We already read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. He speaks. That is going to be it for today, brethren. Um, thank you for watching this. If, if you have, if you made it this far, I know that a select few of you will. Um, thank you. Thank you to my beloved sister our beloved sister, and my best friend, our beloved brother, for the rebuke that you both gave me. How are we supposed to be there for one another when we don't know? More on that in another video. And that one uh, thing that you did, brother, um, that was, wow, amen, amen, amen. That's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. It's uh, 12.34 here in my time here in glorious Illinois. Um, got things to do. Thank you to all of you who love us and pray for us. We pray for a lot of you, many of you. And, um, you know, with the rebuke that in you know, the last week was, how are we supposed to be there for one another? for not bearing one another's burdens. But like I said, we'll get into that in another video. But, um, you know, brethren, you got each other's emails. Brad, you got people's emails? Communicate with one another. Talk to one another. Pray for one another. Because we're all we got. 
Thank you. We love you. Hopefully this helps or does. The Lord be glorified. Okay. I shared with you what he shared with me. You got other things or verses? Go ahead. Put them in the description. Uh, co uh, description. Comment section, please. Love you. See you in the next video. Okay?